we're here live with Michelangelo, <laughs> the Ninja Turtle who also works for Karate Combat. It's a really cool concept. Who knew they would hire turtles? You guys, Karate Combat hires anybody. They'll just pull, they'll pull up any sort of reptile off the street. That's the Dow's uh, DEI policy. Yeah, it's good. It's a really good policy. It's really cutting edge. Nice, dude. What's up? How we doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Just got back from a little walk. Nice. You peering? Are you gazingly out your window right now? Yes. Nice. <laughs> Reflecting on the walk. Wow. Yeah, the turtle really turns his head. Yeah. Her head. It's like a whole two D thing. Dang. Not bad. Snapchat really knows what they're doing as far as entertaining. They do. I'm impressed. Yeah, very much. Dude, what a saga. Last night, so we did a live stream for, like we do an NBA live stream every week, and it went really late. And I was going to bed at 11.45, and I wasn't tired. And I was like, dude, this is going to be rough. If I try to get up at 8 a.m. to do this, I texted you around that time or whatever. And so then I went to the living room to try to wind down and got stuck in a YouTube trap, which always happens. Like, I shouldn't have even turned the TV on. Yeah. So next thing I know, it's 1.30, and then I hear some noise. And I, I bought our dogs those like bully sticks, which I don't know if you know those are. They're basically no. dried bull penises. <laughs> okay. Dog, that dogs, they love them though. Is that actually what it is or that's just like the market? It really is. It really is what it is. They like. And they call uh, it a bully stick. Yeah. Yeah. How much does each one cost? Cheap. Dogs go ape shit over them. Bull but, penis um, is like two bucks, two ninety nine. Cheap. Bull penises have always run cheap. But <laughs> one of our dogs would just eat them. And so our dog uh-huh. ate one and then shit everywhere. And so I was like, yeah. fuck. So inside. Clean, clean inside. Had to clean that up. Oof. So then I did, and then I kept watching YouTube afterwards. So I, I like was very irresponsible with my time. So I appreciate your flexibility. Long runway of that. So by family issue, it was nothing serious. That's uh, less serious than I thought. Do you have pets? Yes, we have. We have a couple of cats, actually. Oh, nice. I don't think they would like a bull penis. No. Cool. I have, I want to hear a little bit more. So for clarity's sake, what is your official title with Karate Combat? Yeah, I don't have one. And Karate Combat's well on its way to being a real DAO. So I'm a contributor, but I've been around since the start and traditionally was an investor in the org and super involved in a bunch of other ways, especially on the marketing front. And then had a lot to do with the crazy stuff we've done with the Karate Combat backgrounds over time. And right now I'm largely leading the charge on everything we're doing in Web3. Dude, they should have a karate combat that's Ninja Turtle inspired. Like that exact backdrop. That would be so sick. I agree. I agree. Okay, so for like the average fighting fan, give me like a brief rundown of what karate combat is. Actually, I'll even give it to you for someone who's not the average fighting fan. Someone who... Yeah, someone who is new to fighting, really. And that's easy for me because I'm not the most knowledgeable person in the org on on martial arts. So the really simple way to think about it is either boxing plus kicking Mm -hmm. or UFC without the wrestling, without the grappling. In the UFC and a bunch of other MMA leagues, grappling, wrestling is super dominant and it's really difficult to win unless you're an excellent wrestler, grappler, you have a lot of training in jujitsu. Karate combat largely eliminates wrestling from the rule set. So it ends up being a stand-up fighting league, largely mostly punching and kicking some throws. And that's what it is to the casual. Yeah, I'm learning very quickly. They call that, it's a striking. Yes. There's a little vocabulary for everybody. Yes. Striking league mostly. Entertaining, by the way, because especially if you're a casual fan, you don't understand what's going on the mat. You might get a little bored watching a couple of people wrestle around on the ground for a long period of time. That doesn't happen in karate combat. You got five seconds to strike your opponent while they're on the ground. Then everybody has to get back up. Yeah. Everybody that I've talked to so far and I've explained to them karate combat, they're like, oh, dude, that sounds like MMA without the boring wrestling, which is awesome. <laughs> like they get really excited about it. So yeah, that's yeah. rad. Okay. So karate combat has been around since 2017, correct? Yeah. 2018 probably 2018. is the first fight. And that was pretty, maybe we had one or two events in 2018. We think about it like we're on like our fourth, the tail end of the fourth season. We moved away from seasons onto a more traditional numbered format. So we're having KC 37 soon. Right. On December 17th, 
yes. in Orlando, Florida. Yes. yes. The back lot of Orlando Studios. I kept like, whenever I was on the lot, I just kept looking around being like, where's the slime? <laughs> where's Slime Time Live? <laughs> oh, man, we should that. integrate it. Dude, that we would should give be... it away or something. Yeah, I'd give away slime mess. or have the backdrop be just like a slime waterfall. I like it. That'd be so fun. I need to trademark that idea just in case it ever happens. I like it. So you've been around since the beginning. Yeah. And at what point was coming up with Karate Combat as a DAO your idea? Or was it something that like came from like a collective think tank? Or walk uh, me through a little bit like where that idea first got started and then what happened from there. So good question. I've actually been in the crypto space from very early on, almost a decade now. And we've always been thinking, is there some way to combine the worlds with everything we're doing in sports, with everything I've been doing in crypto for almost a decade? And most of our ideas were awful, so they never went anywhere. But at the end of 2021, we collectively came up with an idea that uses Web3 technology that we absolutely loved because we thought it worked perfectly for sports fans. And I'll go into that and transitioning to the DAO was the way to make that all happen. So the whole idea in its entirety was led more by what we're calling and branding up only gaming and transitioning to a DAO is a critical piece to make that all happen. Okay. So um, I'll rewind a little bit to, yeah. to DAO world. So yeah. like I deal with this problem every time anybody from my family or otherwise asks me what I'm doing yeah. and I say I work in a DAO and they're like, okay, what is yeah. that? Some yeah. sort of ethnic food? No, <laughs> it's not. It's It's got its roots in crypto. So if I was a strange family member asking you what like a DAO web through was and I had no context, can you explain to me what what that is and how it differs from like the conventional like stereotype of crypto sure. being like pump and dump? And sure, then sure. what the actual technology is doing for sports and how you yeah. like, intertwined all that. So sports leagues are already pretty weird orgs, right? Like the NFL is actually run by 32 billionaires. NBA, NHL, MLB, not that different, actually. The MLB has a constitution, but at the end of the day, it's, it is these kind of weird collectives, but of billionaires. But in Karate Combat, the league is going to be controlled by the fans and the athletes and the suppliers. But at the end of the day, the fans will have the most say in how the league is run. And we use new Web3 technology that's being built every day to make that seamless so that millions of fans around the world can share their voice and make their voice heard in how the league is run. So maybe break down like the contrast. So oh, Karate Combat, if it was run by standard Web 2 technology, how does that sure. work? And then what does the incorporation of Web 3 technology do to differentiate that from like traditional sports leagues? Sure. So actually the, the technology that like a regular sports league would run on is like legal technology that's been around for hundreds of years. Incorporation, a lot of lawyers, paperwork, etc. So technology um, doesn't even mean like computers. It's like, old. Yeah. yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah, basically. And we've had to build from the ground up the legal technology to make karate combat working as a DAO be a practical thing. A lot of DAOs are mostly built around governing code. And a lot of them do that without ever putting in place any sort of real legal infrastructure. Once you move to things that are closer to running a sports league or trying to buy an NBA team, you need the proper legal infrastructure in place for it to be reality because we have IP, we have fighter contracts, we have domain names, social media accounts, content, copyrights. So we needed to build a real legal infrastructure to interface with all the kind of new Web3 technology tools that are out there to make this happen and make it a reality. Interesting. So what's the difference between like legal technology built into the blockchain, which is the technology behind crypto versus like mm -hmm. just coming up with a legal contract that would make fans be a part of the league? Sure. So the way we use all this new technology to run the league 
is in a large way efficiency, right? We're going to be giving these tokens away to millions of our fans. We plan to give them away forever, essentially. We've promised to give away at least half of them. And to do that in an efficient manner and also um, elicit the participation where people actually care, where they're actually getting involved, do need to leverage new technology. It would be really impossible without all the things that are being built in the Web3 space, to be honest. So you mentioned the word token. What is a token and how does that affect the Web3 aspect? If you were explaining to a child yeah. how they can get involved, what value would this token that you guys are coming up with have? Sure. At the end of the day, the easiest way, maybe not for a child, but for a regular normal person to think about a token is a big spreadsheet with everyone's name. Now it might not be their real name. It might be their kind of pseudonym. Everybody's name in one column and the number of tokens they have in the column right next to it. That's really what a token is at the end of the day. It's a big list of who owns what and the total number of tokens that are outstanding. Gotcha. So when you are giving away tokens to uh -huh. karate combat members, what then are they doing with these tokens? And do they hold monetary value or what's the angle with that? Yeah. So they can do a few different things with the tokens. Number one, they can play the game that we've built and developed that incentivizes them to support their favorite fighters and make predictions on which fighters they think are going to win to stand the chance to win more tokens with no risk of loss. They can vote on which fighters should fight which fighters next, which fighters should get a contract, which should be released, which suppliers the league should engage to run parts of its business, and every other thing that would go into governing a sports league. Trying to do it in a low friction way, in a way that doesn't bore people, exhaust people, trying not to ask them questions every day, but to do it in a fun way. Nice. Yeah. So you mentioned, this is unrelated, you mentioned like pseudonyms and then you mm -hmm. are dressed up currently as michelangelo and you can yes. be found on the internet by the pseudonym only larping so yes. can you explain maybe the benefit of pseudonyms in web3 world and why they exist and maybe where yours came from yeah it's actually a little bit more of a tradition in web3 that may or may not be wearing off in a way web3 was started by a man or a woman or a group that goes by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. It's incredible. And it's actually one of the most unbelievable things in the history of cryptocurrency and even technology, but still the real identity of Satoshi is not known. And this org or this person, if they're still living, is worth many billions of dollars may not have ever even touched their Bitcoin. And so it's become a bit of a tradition that a bunch of people in this industry don't reveal their real world identity. They build up a identity and a reputation under a pseudonym. And in a way it allows the technology and the product to speak for itself, to allow the, the people who built it to over time, allow the community to take more and more control. Because really at the end of the day, we're trying to create products that the community runs and, and governs and continues to build for good reasons, because products and orgs and sports leagues that are controlled by the community can really live forever. People can't. Companies can't, right? Companies do not live forever. They live for, uh, I don't know, 100 years, 150 years max. Cities, they can live for thousands of years, right? So we're trying to build the orgs with the persistence of cities, really. And I think that's what is being accomplished. It's very early in the life cycle of Web3, but I think things like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and hopefully one day things like Karate Combat can really approach the staying power of things like cities, cultures, et cetera. So I guess what makes that technically possible is that it's, it, I guess it's by definition, it's just decentralized rather than yeah. being controlled by a single entity. It's controlled by millions of anonymous people that appears strings of numbers and letters that's definitely part of it also it's the whole ethos and the whole way the space operates bitcoin ethereum ourselves we're trying to 
put as much of the underlying infrastructure out there in public. What's called open sourcing, the technology really taking the guts of the way everything works and publishing on the internet and letting anybody who wants to use it. So the anonymous thing on its own doesn't really do a ton. You have to run the whole org in public and allow anybody who wants to interact with and use it. So that's really our ethos. About a month ago, we announced that we're going to let anybody who wants to use the Karate Combat IP, the fighter likenesses, the brand, the VFX backgrounds, the content, uh, allow anybody who wants to to use it to create their own video games and NFTs. We've got a bunch of partners working on that. And that's just the start. Wow. So that's essentially, that's what I'm hearing immediately is that that like automatically separates you guys from any other sports league in that like most other leagues and corporations hold their IP really close to the chest because that's where they make their money. What you guys are basically saying and flipping the system on its head is like the more involvement from people outside of, I guess everybody now is just inside of the corporation. So it is like really incentivizing for a fan to begin to generate their own content. Yeah. And it like, wow. Yeah. Okay. So let's elaborate on that a little bit. Explain to me like what makes Karate Combat, we already know that it stands out from other leagues, but in your particular mind, how are you guys upending the system when you compare to other leagues like professional boxing or UFC or even like standard, like the Karate Federation of America? Yeah. What makes you guys amazing and like standing out in a really groundbreaking way? Sure. Yeah. We think that sports are largely a winner take all situation in each vertical. So we've tried to differentiate ourselves from the leaders in every single important vector and the vectors we're talking about today. So we've really tried to appeal the product to younger generations. So it's really fast paced. We don't have the grappling that you see in most MMA leagues. We film the fights in front of these beautiful immersive 3D environments rendered in Unreal Engine. We distribute the content for free everywhere cross-platform. We don't charge anything to watch the events. The exact same time it's shown for free on TV around the world with great distribution partners. It's shown for free on every single internet site imaginable, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook. And then on the technology and governance side, we've taken this extremely radical approach of converting the league to a decentralized organization. We've sold the entire league to a foundation. We're issuing a cryptographic token that we're giving away to the fans that governs the foundation in almost every way. And then we're gamifying the viewing experience with this game and app and front ends that we've developed called Up Only Gaming that we think will really revolutionize sports. Nice. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit more about games. I love games. Yeah. Yeah. I live for games. Yeah. So this up only gaming that you guys have started, tell me how this works. I have been given a behind the door sneak peek of the application Yeah, and it looks very neat. So yeah. What is that? How get everyone pumped up about it? Sure. There's this huge kind of secular trend towards like the gamification of sports. Anybody who watch sports today, like they see things like FanDuel, DraftKings, BetMGM, Caesars, on every single playing surface, every ad break. It's really taken over sports and especially younger generations. Almost half of them will tell you they don't even like watching sports anymore unless they have some sort of bet on it. We had this dream, and this is where this whole path started about a year ago, was imagine if we can get every single one of our fans a little bit of financial upside on every single one of our fights where they care deeply about who wins the fight, even if they don't know the fighters' names yet. At the end of the day, in sports, it's all about the connection between the fan and the athlete, right? That's the thing that really creates like long-term enterprise value. But you have to get to that point and creating great narratives and content isn't quite enough. You got to get over the hump. You got to get people to care initially. And we think, and we believe that financializing things a little bit to make people really care about the fights, even before they might know the fighters' names is the way to get over that hump. So we developed this game. It uses Web3 technology. Essentially, 
anybody who owns the tokens, mostly fans, they can vote on the fighters they think are going to win. And if they vote on a winning fighter, they earn a little bit more karate tokens. So they're not risking their existing tokens. It's not gambling because they're not, they don't stand to lose anything if they pick a wrong fighter. But if they pick a winning fighter, they get the added bonuses of waking up with a few more karate tokens the next day. I mean, it's all seamless. It also helps the fighters. So that part gets a little bit confusing, but essentially the fighters with the most votes on them also fight for a little bit bigger bonuses above their and beyond their contracted pay. So we think we created the perfect flywheel here, the perfect way to use this new Web3 technology in a way that it excites sports fans. I'm a sports fan and I'm excited. Um, <laughs> so there's one success story. Yeah, you're, so far your success rate is one of one. <laughs> you nailed it. So what exactly, when you guys were formatting this, how did the economics of that work out? Are you guys yeah. giving away things and losing value of the karate token? Yeah. Or is it maintaining itself like through the up only gaming system? So what's the financial incentive both for the karate combat as a DAO and then for each, the individual people participating in the game? Yeah. Look, we have to do this all in kind of a data driven, smart, iterative way to make sure we're not giving tons of tokens to people who don't care about them and just sell them on a crypto exchange. But from our standpoint, this is the perfect way to acquire new fans to grow the fan base from three to 5 million to 50 million to 500 million. And if we're successful in doing that, it doesn't matter how many tokens we give away. And yeah, the game itself, it does involve creating new tokens for the rewards, but all of those new rewards, they all go to the existing token holder. You're probably familiar with things like token splits or stock splits, like where Tesla says, Hey, there's a thousand shares today there's two thousand tomorrow you went to bed with one share you woke up with two shares it's a very similar mechanism for up only gaming we're creating new tokens but they all go to the people who already own them at the end of the day it makes sense from a financial perspective we're just using the game to get people more and more excited about the product and if we do that it's a home run yeah no kidding so i want karate tokens Michelangelo, yeah. where yeah. and how can I get them? Sure. So they haven't been released yet, but very early next year, we were planning to do it in December. We slipped a few weeks, but very early next year, anybody who signed up with us, you can still go to karate.com slash airdrop and put your name on the list. Anybody who signed up with us early next year is going to get free tokens. And then after the airdrop, you should be able to buy them on a crypto exchange as well, or buy them from a friend, or play the game to earn more tokens. So what you're saying basically is 2023 is going to be a huge year for Karate Combat? Uh, it should be, yeah. That's okay. the plan. That's the That's message. plan. Yeah, That's we've the... been building all year, killing ourselves to do this, and it's about to go live. So that's super exciting. And we really believe in what we've built. Dang, Splinter would be proud. So... You've been with Karate Combat since the beginning. We've gone over this. Yeah, yeah. Are there any specific like standalone stories that you find hilarious to tell to other people or like maybe a favorite thing that's happened that sits in your head as a cherished memory, a core memory, if you will? Oh, wow. Or we can well, even short frame it. We could go back to KC36. Yeah. What was the highlight of the weekend for you? The yeah, knockouts are awesome. Everybody loves knockouts. Assuming everybody's safe and fine. The short fights are awesome right yeah. like already the fights are short it's three three minute rounds so at most except for championship fights you know those are five rounds and we do have a tiebreaker round but at the end of the day all the fights are nice and short and when it ends in a knockout everybody in the live environment at least goes nuts the yep. place is bouncing off the wall roy jones jr was there sitting pit side it's a great live experience because Especially if you got a VIP ticket, you can basically hang over the edge of the pit and basically like film what's ever going on, like right there. So you get these great reaction videos from people. If you check out our Instagram or whatever, you can see people just going nuts. Jeez, have you ever gotten anything? <laughs> no, thank God, no. Thank God, no. But you know what's interesting is we're, it's a little bit, it's probably a lot less bloody than the UFC because we don't allow elbows, and that's where mm. a lot of it comes from. And then also the grappling around on the floor can cause a lot of blood. It's a bit less bloody than a bunch of other combat sports, but you still, it's more like 
as uh, Rob likes to say, like a Mike Tyson fight. You get the knockouts, but a little bit less of the gore. And uh, I've taken my wife to a bunch of fights, and she's able to enjoy it without getting freaked out. I've taken her to UFC events, and she's made us leave. Just gets too grossed out. Well, no shade on UFC, but maybe maybe just a healthy. No, no, there's definitely fans out there that love that stuff, but um, it's a smaller part of the world. Yeah, for sure. So, last question: What do you love most about karate combat personally? It can be from a business perspective, fighting perspective, crypto, you name it. What excites you the most, and what are you like most passionate about when you show up to work every day? So I'm most psyched about the Web3 aspect of it that might be a little bit more hidden and not even the financialization side of it. But I think just the open ecosystem play we're going after. I talked a bit about it in NFTs and video games and RIP, but we want to take that same strategy of letting anybody who wants to to build on the league across the entire org. Soon the all the code and for up only gaming and all the front ends, the app we showed you, all that stuff will be open source. And I'm going to spend a lot of my time trying to convince like really smart young people around the world to build their own businesses on top of that stuff to put easier to understand example, like we're doing it in video games, but like hopefully soon we're doing it in merch. Let anybody who wants to create their own merchandise with the Karate Combat brand content. Let anybody who wants to create their own content. And I think the emergent, exciting applications that will come out of that when some smart person sitting somewhere in the world can just go to work and do it, who knows what people will come up with. And I love that stuff. And it's super rare. The most successful orgs in the world are still these orgs that have been around forever. And like you said, they just have a completely different ethos and way of thinking about IP. There's keep it really close to the chest. Dana White, he goes on TV, threatens to throw you in jail if you stream the fights. Man, we'll probably give you some free tokens if you stream our fights and get a bunch of people (laughs) watching it. Yeah. Now, I think there's a really interesting thing to the whole, the way that sports are transforming, like you've said, with the short attention span of viewers, like where you have to figure out some way or another how to engage and captivate people. And we're in such an age of like content creators. If you ask any grade school kid what they want to be when they grow up, they're like, oh, I want to be a YouTube streamer or like a yeah. Twitch streamer. And yeah. they, there's like a desire to create content. And so I think it's such an obvious answer that we're in this like boom of content generation. And I think the when it comes to sports, the league or the team that can figure out how to include the fans, which is how they make all their money anyway, into whatever else is going to have the sharpest knife in the bag. And sure. the one that does that first does that well. And I think leagues, really, I don't know any other league that's doing this in any sport. So I will just say, yeah. I think Karate Combat is leading the charge on that. And I, I'm pretty bullish on it, as they say in awesome. crypto terms. So awesome. Yeah, I think fan incorporation is everything. And so I'm excited about this personally. Awesome, man. Thank you very much. That means a lot. You can follow Michelangelo here on Twitter (laughs) at only LARPing. If you tweet at him, he might respond with a sir, S-E-R. I caught on to that. And that's really funny. And then if you want to join the DAO and be part of the conversation, there is a Discord server called Karate Combat. You can find it on karate.com. Join Discord. It's like the go-to application for a lot of Web3 stuff. Do you have anything to add about Discord? No, it's a really nice, welcoming, tight community. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have you there. Sweet. Yeah, check it out. Thanks again for your time, Mike. Appreciate (laughs) you and... Can't wait to beat the event on December 17th. So Awesome, man. Yeah. I can't wait to hang. Yeah, likewise.